What's up everyone, welcome to this video. Today I've taken an exercise out of this book, Automating the Boring Stuff with Python. The exercise that we're gonna work on today is inspired by this idea that we often repeat ourselves in emails. Typically when we write an email, we often have common template responses. For example, if you agree with someone, you might write, I agree with you, that sounds fine to me. Or if you're busy, you usually reply with, I'm currently busy at the moment, but let's talk about that later. This program is meant to make it easy for you to extract that full sentence from a given word and then put that into the clipboard so you can paste it later on in an email. This tutorial is jam-packed. We're gonna learn about data structures in Python, manipulating the clipboard, and processing command line arguments. By the way, when it comes to learning programming, I know there's a lot of mundane tutorials and videos and books out there. On my channel, I try and teach you programming in a way that's fun and interesting with projects like this. With that said, please do give this video a like and consider subscribing and tapping the bell icon so you get notified as soon as I release tutorials like this. If you have any feedback or any video requests, do let me know in the comments below. I'm very responsive to all of my subscribers. So with that said, grab yourself a drink and let's get started. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the project folder. So I'm gonna title this multi clipboard automatic messages. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this folder in our favorite text editor. Now that we've got the folder open in our favorite text editor, we're gonna create a file. Um, so we'll do that by right clicking new file. And the book advises that we create or we name the file mclip.py. So let's do that. Right, so fantastic. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our data structure that's gonna store all of the messages, right? So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a dictionary called text. I'm gonna set that equal to a, an empty dictionary. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start populating each one of the phrases. So as we mentioned before, if the user runs the program and passes one of these key phrases, we want to pass the subsequent value in this case for or well for this particular key phrase. It's going to be yes, I agree, that sounds fine to me. And so we're gonna have quite a few of these. So I'm just gonna uh, duplicate each one of these using a, a shortcut. And then I'm gonna write the other. So the next one is busy. And then the corresponding uh, phrase is going to be, sorry, can, can we do this later? Can we do this later this week or next week? Can we do this later? And then the last one is going to be upsell. And for that, would you consider making this a monthly donation? So just to recap, what we're doing is we're going to be storing each one of these key phrases in the dictionary. And we're gonna be accessing these later so that when the, again, when the user runs the program and passes any one of these, um, we're going to pull out the corresponding value and print that out. Now that we've got the data structure in place, the next thing we need to do is figure out when the user runs a program, what phrase are they typing? So as you can imagine, when the user runs a program, they're gonna run it as follows. So they'll type python mclip.py and then they'll type the name of the key phrase. So they might type agree or they might type busy or they might type upsell. Whichever one they choose to do, we need to be able to get access to this argument here. It's called an argument in Python, and to be able to get access to that, uh, we need to import the sys library, um, shorthand for system. So we'll do that by going to above and typing import sys, and then the sys library has a really cool and neat way of being able to get all the arguments passed when the user runs the program, because when you actually run this program, um, you can actually type multiple arguments or any Python program, you can type many arguments. Um, and so sys uh, allows us to be able to access these arguments. Again, just for this tutorial, there's only gonna be one argument and that's gonna be the key phrase, um, but it's just worth knowing that you can get access to all of the arguments using the sys library. Now, the next thing we need to do is get access to all of the arguments passed over by the user. Now, how do we access that? Well, we imported the sys library and we need to access a, a property on that called argv. Argv is an array and it's actually going to be a list of all the arguments that a user runs a Python program with. So what does that look like? What does that mean? Well, it's gonna be an array and it's gonna have the list of arguments, but there's one caveat and it's really important to remember this. The first argument, no matter what, will always be the name of the Python program. Never forget that. Sys.argv, the first argument um, in this array, 
will always be the name of the Python program. And then thereafter, you'll be able to access or look at the other arguments that a user has um, passed in. So for example, if the user was to run this program by typing Python mclip.py, and then they passed in agree as the first argument, you will get back uh, this array in sysargv, where the first argument will be the name of the program, and the second argument will be actually uh, corresponding to the argument uh, that they've run the program with. So always bear that in mind. Know that at minimum, there will always be at least one um, element in this array of argv, which is the name of the program. And then beyond that, you might have many more elements corresponding to the number of arguments that they've passed in when they ran the program. Now, with that information, what we need to do is we need to make sure that sysargv actually has an argument, right? Because a user can run the program. They might type python mclip.py without any argument, in which case we want to raise an error because for this program to work, they need to pass in at least one argument. So let's write that check. So we're going to do if the len which is the len of uh, sys.argv. So if the uh, then uh, shorthand for length gets you the uh, number of elements, in this case, the number of elements from this array, if len of sys.argv is less than two, uh, then you know if it's less than two, uh, they haven't passed an argument, in which case we want to print uh, usage python mclip.py and then key phrase and this is just meant to be a helper to sort of encourage them or give them an idea of uh, how they should go about running the program so that's going to print that out and then what we want to do is exit and the way you exit in python is you call a method called exit on the sys library so sys.exit right so that looks good if however they have passed in an argument um, it's going to be equal to two, in which case this won't be called and we're going to execute the next piece of code. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to create a key phrase variable and that's going to store the argument that they've passed in. And this is just going to look cleaner, make it look cleaner uh, in our program. So uh, the position that that um, argument that they've passed in is going to be in number one. Uh, again, remember, we when it work, comes to working with arrays in programming, um, as well as, of course, Python, um, the first element will be in position zero, second element position one, third element position two, etc., etc. So the argument that they've passed in, of course, is going to be in position one. Now we've got access to that. The next thing what we, uh, that we want to do is we want to check that the key phrase, so the argument that they've passed in, is actually in this text um, dictionary. If it's not in the text dictionary, then of course we have an issue, right? But if it is, then we can then uh, return back uh, the value. So to do that, it's quite simple in Python. All you have to do is you type if the key phrase in is the keyword and you pass in text. This is why Python is such a great language. It's very readable, quite easy to understand and reason with. You know exactly what's going on when you see that line of code, even if you're not a programmer. And once you've done that, the next thing to do is we want to copy the value for that key phrase into the clipboard. To do that, we need to import the Piper clip library. And we're going to import like that as follows. And once we've got access to the Piper clip library imported, we want to call piperclip.copy. And then what that's going to do is um, that's going to allow us to copy some text to the clipboard. Now, what text do we want to copy? Well, we want to copy um, we want to copy the text that they're referencing with the key phrase. So we uh, get access to the data structure first. And then we use square brackets and we put the key phrase in between the square brackets. That tells Python that what we want to do is we want to get the value um, in the text variable where the key phrase matches. So for example, if they passed in agree, um, then it would look something like that. This is just to give you an idea, but it will look something like that, right? And so Python will read this. It will say text agrees in there, and then they'll give you back the value. Um, but of course, this is going to be key phrase because that might change depending on what they pass in when they run the program. So that looks good. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to print this out so we know uh, what this looks like and also letting the user know uh, what's just happened. So text for the key phrase, key phrase, uh, key phrase has been copied to clipboard. And then I'm going to use the formatted string in Python where you put the uh, character F between or before the uh, starting quote. 
and then I'm going to use the braces and within that I'm going to uh, pass in the text key phrase. So that's going to show us exactly what text uh, or actually what we'll do is we'll just we don't need to do that. That's going to print out the entire sentence and we don't want to do that. Let's keep it simple and just sort of say that for this key phrase that they've entered, we've copied it to the clipboard because the confirmation is enough. Now, in the case that the argument that they've passed in doesn't exist, in other words, they've given us a key phrase that, you know, isn't in this text dictionary, then what we want to do is we just want to say there is no text for the key phrase. And we're just going to print that out. No text for 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 the key phrase. Uh, one thing I have done here just to keep consistent is uh, let's make sure we use double quotes because we were using them um, before for all of the strings. So if it doesn't exist in the text dictionary, then we just let them know no text for the key phrase. And uh, let's be absolutely clear. Why not just let them know exactly what key phrase for which we couldn't find the text. And that looks good. Now, the last thing that we want to do to get this program to work is we want to uh, install the PyperClip library. Now, requirements or Python libraries that you choose to use for a project should always be listed in a requirements.txt file. So I'm going to create a requirements.txt file. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type PyperClip and the version for which we want to install PyperClip is going to be 1.7 or 1.8.1, sorry. So 1.8.1. And so put that in the requirements.txt file and I'll show you how we're going to go about installing um, all the requirements from this text file later on. So that way, when we import PyperClip, it doesn't throw us an error. So the program is ready to run. We're good to go. Uh, so let's give this a run. Right, so I've opened up item into the project folder. If you're using Windows, feel free to use command prompt. If you're using Mac, use terminal. Um, but item works on both operating systems. You can download it online and it's quite neat. So I'm opened in the um, project directory. And so let's type ls, which will list out all of the files. Now to install the requirements um, that we listed, in other words, to install PyperClip, we type pip install dash r requirements.txt. What this will do, um, the dash r flag indicates that we want to install all the requirements from a given file. And um, in this case, we'll pass in requirements.txt. There is only one requirement and that's PyperClip, but in other projects where you have a list of requirements, uh, you might have more than uh, one. So we hit enter and that will, um, in this case, install PyperClip. I've already got it installed um, because I was using it on a previous project, but you'll get a confirmation just as just as I have now. And now that it's installed, all we need to do is run the program. So I'm gonna run the program first. So let me just clean this up. I'm gonna run the program first without an argument, right? And let's see what happens. So as you can tell, I ran the program without an argument and the code that dealt with that scenario where we didn't pass in the key phrase uh, um, execute and it printed out, you know, if you want to run this program, make sure you pass in the key phrase. So that looks good. And now if I run it with an argument, it will attempt to retrieve the uh, text. And as you can tell, um, it's been copied to the keyboard. Now I'm going to paste in the terminal. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste and as you can tell, it's pasted out uh, the value. In other words, the sentence that corresponded to that key phrase. So that looks good. So that's it, really. That's the program that works perfectly fine. That does exactly what we expected it to do. And uh, that's the exercise from Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. All right, so that's the end of the tutorial. I'm sure you enjoyed it. So make sure you give this video a like. We learn everything from data structures to manipulating command line arguments to even manipulating the clipboard. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a lovely day and peace.